This deck is so shit, too. We have to lose soon, right? So, Silent Storm. Let's see what, what other decks these guys are working with, actually. They're actually still on the second game, which is crazy, because we just finished a BO3, and I wrote a lot. So, Silent Storm has got this. Enchantress. Beastmaster Splash. Yikes, that's rough. Beastmaster is a really bad splash hero, because Primal Roar sucks if you can only cast it on, like, one target. Feels bad. Incarnation of Salamani, that's a spicy meme. That trolley. Okay, top four. So spec is out, hype slayer downed, Ave is out, again I don't really know who any of these, I actually, now that I think about it, I actually don't know who a single one of these other players are, I think Claire Elska was in the beta, I want to say. You guys are done with their series already. So we got Venomancer, Sniper Splash. Sniper Splash coming out on four. Oh, eek. I don't know about that. Maybe it's necessary. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, if anyone just looked at my deck, they would they would make the same face. It's like, ooh, what's this? You know. But like, some sometimes you get a bad draft, and <laughs> you know. I mean, it looks like these two players don't really have great drafts. Let's see if Silent Storm is winning. Because if Silent Storm is winning this game, then we can already think about what we're gonna do against the deck. So Silent Storm looks like he's about to win this game. I mean, all this entry just has to do with take right lane, right? You got a Seder Duelist. Oh, three deploys, though? Three deploys. I mean, this Primal Roar could actually force that out. Initiative is held by... Silent Storm right now. He's thinking about passing for initiative. I think you have no choice, but... Oh, that's so hard, though. You have Primal Roar and it's mana 13. If like, if these heroes are about to flop in front of your Beastmaster, you actually need initiative. But this is necessary for sure. So, one clock there. This game's intense. So Claire needs to deal 13 left. No punch through. I mean, Claire's hand is super bad here. Yeah, that's necessary. But, I mean, if you just spend your time defending, right? You're just gonna lose your Ancient, right? This Thunderhide Chad just needs to literally smack this tower once, but it never works. Like, this card is just like, it always just gets chumped, you know? Like, when with ooh. You've gotta put one thing right, right? Because you can't take this. This is a really tricky decision, honestly. There's a consideration to put all three right. <laughs> Venom has to go left. I mean, th this looks... this lo <sighs> So, Claire now has decided uh, Claire's win condition is taking right. This is game one. This is... Oh, wait. I just realized. <laughs> You're not asking me about this game. You're ten minutes in the past.
These are good arrows right now. Assassinate's opened up. Jane just kind of has nothing to play on the right side either. Intimidation is spooky. It's not really that useful here though. But I mean, if you're silent, you're mostly just stonewalling. Interestingly enough, right kind of looks like the lane to be, right? So, and changes might actually intimidate something like the sniper. Vesture pickup? What? <laughs> Just secret shop Vesture. If Silent wins this game, then we're against Silent. If Claire wins, then it's 50 50. Because right now, Silence is up 1 0. I mean, Claire's just never going to be able to punch through this. Like, there's no way. Basically, there's always just counterplay options. 13 damage is just, it's never actually going to be dealt. You don't have like any sort of gimmicky thing. There's always going to be like a roar or an intimidation coming down. Initiative right now held by Claire. So you open with assassination on the enchantress and then you can't headshot this unfortunately. Assassinate, headshot, hipfire. Punch this for 14. Survive one turn left and then take this. So Jamoy will redeploy here next turn. You have to assassinate the enchantress first. You have no choice. And then, I mean, don't you then just have to sync both taps into this, right? So it's just assassinate into, you, you can't afford Roseleaf on top of that. You actually can't, yeah, you can if you sync them. Okay, so, uh, you might need Roseleaf left. Uh... Saving hipfire. Holding on to hipfire seems pretty strange. Initiative could have actually mattered left depending on how it went. And you could have killed the satyr here. Man, not actually being like a professional caster is great. Because like, when you're professionally casting, you can't just like, you know, you can't just go like, full loomy, you know? Like you can't, okay. <laughs> You, you, so you you have to you, you can't really be like critical right like but here I can just kind of flame these guys <laughs> I don't know honestly there there is actually a, a consideration to hold tip fire I feel like the extra damage you push plus the preserved initiative I mean there's always Top decks where that makes a difference. Not on left, but like guaranteed initiative carried over to the right side. <laughs> this is interesting. Who are we rooting for? We're rooting for whoever has the worst deck, I guess. I don't know. Honestly, all three of our decks are pretty bad. Like, my deck... Their, their decks have to both be better than mine, though. None of these is, like, a good deck, though. This one has... Sniper Splash versus Beastmaster Splash. See this on the side of Beastmaster Splash. Yeah, these decks are all pretty uninspiring, actually. Double Relentless Zombie. Man. Everyone got screwed in this draft. All the good cards were already taken, guys. I don't know. This Vesture is uh, pretty hot, right? This game is just going to keep going on, too. We might actually be here for like 40 minutes. Because if Claire wins, this is going to a game three. Claire needs a way to get through this Vesture, basically. That's going to be kind of impossible. But it looks like Claire actually won unit presence on this board somehow. Let them 
It's just a staggered lane. I mean, it looks like this right lane is just too stalled at this point, right? Nothing's getting through this Vestra. This is a pretty good Thunder Gods. But, I mean, we could be looking at a tie, right? Oh my god, if, it is, if this is a tie, we're going to be here for like an hour. I mean, you have Intimidation. You can use that on the Thunder Alpha. And then Silent just wins, right? Silent looks pretty good. This is outside of Assassination range. That's important. Silent looks pretty good here, I think. This is a good creep spawn. Dude, this is a crazy game. How is this happening? We're at 15 mana, guys. I don't- I, I've never actually seen that. I've never seen a game go to 15 mana. O outside of like, I, I I think there's like, there's Fog of War that's actually not even a bad draw here. Fog of War is a crazy draw here. It's a lot of RNG. If you can stop this dinosaur from attacking, that's big. Like, there's memes where people intentionally try to go to deep mana, but 15 mana, like, when both players are trying, that's... I've never seen that. Intimidation on the Venomancer. Okay, Fog of War is locked out now on this lane. That's a big deal. And these, th This is why Splashing Beastmaster is kind of chunky, because you've got, like, look at this. Triple Roar, and nothing in front of your one red hero. That's what feels bad. So this tower is going down to 8. It looks like Silent will just be taking this next turn. I mean, Claire has no real way to punch through. But Claire is about to just triple deploy here, right? In theory, a tie is possible. Like, Skyrath comes down. You just... I think Claire is looking for a tie at this point. Like, right now, Silent has no way to defend this Thunderhide alpha, right? So, like, if you look at how it's triple deploy left, Claire will probably lose, but Silent could lose too at the same time. Um, and that's really important. I think that... I think it was probably a misplay. With Silent's current hand, I think it was probably a misplay to use Call of the Wild here. It's kind of important to save it. Because right now, if nothing goes in front of Beastmaster, you have nothing... You actually have no hand, right? If you save, if you save the Call of the Wilds for defensive purposes, like, it can sometimes win you the game by stopping the Thunder Chat Alpha from punching you in the tower. Whereas, using it for 3 damage doesn't really do anything. I don't know. Sometimes this gap stays open, right? Like, that's possible. It gets reopened. That's a spooky lose condition. Or, I'm in a tie condition, but when you're winning, a tie is a loss. This Vesture is literally carrying Silent. This is a secret shop Vesture, right? Or it is, is it just... I think it would show it here if it wasn't a secret shop. Like, this Vesture is so clutch. <laughs> I wonder if he held for it, at least. So, quad deploy left. And then it's just up to Claire to find a way to make a gap here, right? You've got no black on this lane, which kind of sucks. Because that's your hip fire. Zeus in front of the thunder. I mean, you can fog of war. There are actually some realities where this fog of war will stop your tower from. Whoa! Friendly fire with initiative! Yo, yo, yo! Whoa! Is this it? Dude, dude, dude! Is this a tie? Dinosaur and Zeus? And that's a tie? Yo, yo, yo! That's it! Friendly fire with initiative. Just slam that dino into Zeus. You can even fog of war after that? It's actually impossible that you could even win! If the Fog of War disarms almost everything. Honestly, wait. It doesn't need to disarm much. All it needs to disarm, if you, uh, both the Zeus and the Dino die, all you need to do is disarm the Hellbear and the Farvan, and you actually win, right? Yo. You have to friendly fire this. It, uh. Seems kind of risky to play that first, but... 
So this is just a win, right? Wait, what? What am I talking about? There's chumps here. This is, you don't need to fog. This is just a win. Just literal no hand on the side of Silent. Guys, Silent is actually literally out of cards in his deck. I didn't even realize that. He didn't. He didn't get the draw. Yeah, using that Call of the Wild there. Maybe this game still goes to Claire even if he saves it, but he is able to play for an additional turn. So now the Fog of War has it has to disarm this Hellbear. You ha wait wait. Bracers? No, no, no. Bracers. Bracers is guaranteed. Blow up the Skyrath. Do so you Fog of War first? I must be protected. Don't you Fog of War first? I mean, you have to Fog of War first. <laughs> I guess if you're clear, you know exactly what Silent has in his hand. Because it's two primals and a favor. Because it's he, he's drawn his entire... How, how has this game happened this way? Second primal of Roar on the Thunderhide Alpha? I didn't even see that. I didn't see the Messenger Rookery. Dude. Holy shit, this game. I mean, the fog whiffs. So now the Skyrath has to blow up. The Skyrath has to blow up to stay alive. I did not see the Rookery there. Dude, what the hell is going on? What? What is this game? Does Claire have it right? There's no initiative, but nothing can be done here. I mean, the Vesture is just not enough because the Thunderhide is in this lane. If the Thunderhide went mid, if the Thunderhide just went mid, doesn't Silent win? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> what was this game? I wish I had seen this from the start. This is... <laughs> this was actually... A super crazy game. Holy shit. Well, I mean, I guess since we're sitting here anyway, we'll watch their game three. See how this goes. Damn. Bello. Dude, si <laughs> Double Omex Arena just drawing him every card in his deck. Is actually crazy. What's going on here? Have I been streaming for ten hours? God damn it. God damn it. I really wanted to. I want it to be done by now. <laughs> Fuck. Alrighty. <sighs> These are crazy decks. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not super afraid of either of these decks, but honestly, my deck is definitely the worst out of the three of them. So. I think this side of the bracket is probably not going to win the tourney. That's my, that's my suspicion. I think my draft was definitely suboptimal. In terms of how I played it. Like, I did get a fair amount screwed by RNG in terms of, like, the color options available to me. I'm sure I could have salvaged it better than I did, though. I'm probably a lot more confident at playing the games out than the actual draft itself. Just because I haven't really played draft enough right now. I've been a constructed boy for like three weeks straight. Probably Vanguard. Probably is pretty sweet here. No one is getting past us. These two 
two decks go on so long. Mystic Flare left. Initiative on the side of Silent right now is huge. This Mystic Flare off of the Druid, just cleaning up the Beastmaster, is really good. But Silent can't really do anything off this initiative. This is a really big deal. This Flare is actually gigantic. I mean, there's nothing you can do here, right? You can't... You need to draw something on Silent side. Bronze League and Air, not, not going to do it. Conflag is a good draw, but this Mystic Flare is actually going to clean up. You can't kill this creep. So, Conflag probably over on the right side. Actually, he could Conflag from mid. That's probably better. Conflag and Verdant. I think you just take the Conflag here. Conflag right, and then use... Um, I change just to Verdant right or something. It's a good play. We still gonna flare this? This is still a powerhouse flare, honestly. Mogwai is leaving games faster than new games can come out. <laughs> uh, too soon, guy. Come on. Too soon. The Mystic Flare can still kill the Yamoy. I don't know, this is a hard flare. Which do you flare? You flare the three in the middle? It's gotta be the three, right? Better than flaring the Jamoy. He's just a lone boy. I mean, this does lock Blaze out. Hurts can flag. I think Silent wanted to both can flag and Verdant. And now you'll have to can flag off the Zeus, which means maybe no Verdant. Keen Gaming. Dodo is their captain. Keen Gaming is KG. Oh, that's good to know. Silence is pretty well known in Hearthstone. Kind of an aggressive usage of that. Dude, these decks are a little resident sleeper. Like, that last game was in a crazy board state, but these are slow ass decks. I'm not gonna lie. Scarath dying to Conflag is huge, because this Mystic Flare off of initiative, just killing these three, is game winning. So we just have to open with Headshot, right? You don't really have anything to curve it with. You can assassinate something mid. Yeah, I mean, if the Venom goes mid, we're playing for mid. So just assassinating something mid is pretty, pretty nice. Assassinate the. Enchantress probably, right? Mm, I could see an argument for Zeus. Let's see what we're playing around if we're Claire. Because Claire's right now doing the same thing. F3. See what we're playing around. Honestly, Enchantress is not really doing as much. Thunder Gods is a little slower. Okay, we're just going to hold on to Assassinate. I think this is probably proper. You wish you had something better to play than Prowler Vanguard. But, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes that's just how it be. My knowledge is vast. Messenger recruit plus battlefield control. Such delight. Oh my God. Vitamins are staying alive. So who's favored here? 
I mean, this left lane looks pretty won by Claire. Double deploy, though, plus they can flag. Hmm. This left lane could still be securable. The big thing is that Claire has Annihilation. And this this right lane is just a huge wall of stats. Nothing is actually happening on this lane. <laughs> Dude, look at this lane. It's just... How much damage is being dealt total? Six damage total. And seven damage total on this lane. That's just because this tree is a man. So after this, as soon as this is Second over, what is that me? As soon as this is over, just as soon as this is over, we will be I have foreseen what going to the winner of wh whoever wins this. God, this is actually going to take forever to be over. <laughs> Dude, if I actually win my top, my top four, my semifinals match. I unironically will get no sleep. So my Chinese tournament is in seven hours from now. I have to be awake in seven hours. Kill me. End it. <sighs> Can't do this. <laughs> like, this, is, this game is going to take a good 40 minutes to wrap up. Then I've got six hours. And even if I lose my series... I've got like five hours of sleep. Even if I lose my series in a zero two, I'm looking at like five hours of sleep before another eight hour tournament. Tell us what you need. I can't, I can't, can't keep doing this. Uh, there's, there's not enough monster in the world for this. <laughs> Maybe I'll just make it a 24-hour back-to-back tournament stream. I can't... Dude, I like, imagine if I win the semifinals. It's actually literally not impossible for me to keep winning games to the point where I will actually have to concede because my China tournament is starting. That is literally possible. What the... Of course, I'm not going to make it that far because my deck is trash, but, you know, I could make finals. <laughs> Good flare. Off that uh, so venom uh, random hit, yeah, the flare kills the enchantress now, which is a big deal. Blocks the Seder duelist. That's an important 50-50 that the so venom uh, plague ward banana guy just took. And then the Zeus has just kind of got nothing. I mean, you just got a like cunning plan, but and then battlefield control to kill the Vino. It's pretty good. Kind of sucks doing battlefield control as a literal one mana do nothing, but sometimes one mana do nothing is all you need, you know. <laughs> you gotta go for it here. You gotta. One mana do nothing is a good card. Zeus controls mid. Bracers. Ooh, bracers on initiative here is a big boom. Especially with no blue in hand. I mean, if this Beastmaster keeps dying, Claire's in a good spot. Cause like, look at how look at how many red cards are in this hand stranded, and look at their mana cost too. Like, that's really important. Claire's doing a good job of punishing this Beastmaster. Now, it does have 16 health, so it's going to be hard to just keep killing. But if this Beastmaster is able to just be punished out over and over again, um, Silent's going to have a really, really chunky hand. And this right lane is slowly going in the favor of Claire. Horn, 16 gold. You, I mean, this is a long game. Sometimes you think of... 
Claire sees it. Claire's thinking about holding this horn right now. I don't know, dude. This game is going on so long, right? I might have held that horn. That's tempting. Claire definitely thought about it. Beastmaster right side. So right's is just a total stall. <sighs> this was your destiny. He fight as someone who got top four in a qualifier, man. The initiative is important, keeps you safe from the bracers. I'll face whatever comes. Dude, everyone got slammed on these drafts though. Like I have some jank in my deck. What do I have? Like two combat training and one mist of our uh blessing of ruinous, right? And then you see a deck like this with one bellow. I mean fog of war is actually kind of underrated, maybe, but it's not usually a card you like running. Maybe it's actually okay in drafts. Two Relentless Zombie. I mean, this deck is chunky. And you've got what on the side? Smeevil Blacksmith. Oh. That's... That's one of the chunkiest cards in the game. An Incarnation of Salamene. It's possible I underrate this card in draft, but... I feel like it would take me... It would, it would take a lot to get me to play Salamene in a draft deck. So, all three of us in this side of the bracket, all three of the remaining players, me and these two players, all have pretty chunky decks. <laughs> like, this is, whoever's on the other side of the bracket for the finals is going to have a pretty, a pretty nice time. Let's, let's just put it that way. You know, like, this is no good. I can dispatch you whenever I wish. Like the way he says, dispatch. Okay. We're getting to the Thunderhide mana range. Both of these decks are really late game. I'm definitely gonna have to play really aggressively, and that's good for me because that's kind of that's kind of my forte. I think isn't that pronounced fort? People say forte. That's my fort. It sounds even worse saying fort actually. That's my forte in drafts is playing aggressively. That's usually how I actually just win. I just cheese decks out. I definitely should learn to draft better. Because I think that I wouldn't have to rely on cheese tactics to win games. Shift here. You got the flare, but this flare blows. This is a bad flare. You got the headshot on sniper, but that kind of blows too. You kind of want to just top deck into like assassinate or something. And I mean, Silent Stonewall this left lane really hard. This actually looks nasty. This enchant is going here, plus they can flag. High unit count, plus 21 health. I mean, this, this left lane might just be not takeable by Claire. <laughs> Two Omex Arenas and Silence Hand. There's the Assassinate. I mean, if you want it, you can try to punch through, but... At this point, like, you're starting to commit a lot of resources to something that just might not happen. You got the Thunderhide Alpha. And you know it's pretty safe, I mean... Thunderhide won't be... Didn't the Thunderhide get down to 2 HP in the last game? How did that... How did it take 23 damage? How long was it in that lane? Did... Was it played on curve? Because if so, it was in that lane for, like, 9 turns. <laughs> There's so many questions about that last game, actually. How did everything end up that way? That's a good assassinate. We're taking down the mid lane while we can. Claire's looking... I think Claire's looking to be in a good spot here, I gotta say. Like, this mid lane, I think is... It's slow, but it's spoken for, right? Slow, but spoken for. Zeus can't annihilate. We still have the kind of get out of jail feel... 
We still have the get out of jail free card on the side of uh, Claire with Annihilation. You won't feel a thing. And because, you know, this is such a slow crawl matchup, it's gonna be, be kind of safe both ways. I think Claire probably has a stronger deck, so I'm kind of rooting for Silent. Unless I just want to take a nap, and then I'm rooting for Claire, yeah. <laughs> Phase Boots on Far Run? That doesn't really do anything. You can kill the, uh, well, you can't even kill this. Barbed Male Retaliate doesn't even do anything against the Silent. I mean, Silence won this lane. Claire's won this lane. So I think it's like, it's all coming down to this right lane, and honestly, I mean, the Beastmaster's online. Look at this. This is the only lane that matters. We can just Primal Roar this Treant like three turns in a row. <laughs> I think Claire... I do want to say, I really think... I suspect Claire has kind of greatly overcommitted to this left lane. Like, I think, uh, what deployed here? This turn? The Venomancer, I want to say. Like, the Enchantress... If the Enchantress is coming down... Like, the Conflag plus the Stonewall just makes this just... I mean, you're just not getting through here, right? It's the one at 21, but I think right kind of becomes the lane to fight for. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah, the magicking. You left me no choice. See, the thing is, Silent basically has to pass because if you play, oh, I mean, you can roar, but if you play like Omex Arena, I guess you still have enough for Hellbear for the Thunderhide. Ah, <laughs> uh, yo, Arrow. Okay, Silent, <laughs> you motherfucker. Dude, no punish! Oh my god! Zero respect to Thunderhide, and it's just not gonna matter. What the hell? Dude. <laughs> Jesus. I don't know. Now that the Thunderhide is developed and the BM is dead, Claire has to win this, right? This looks really favored for Claire here. Five seconds remaining. Like this is this is an important turn. Wait, did this dude just go mid? Oh, he hasn't decided yet. I was gonna say Zeus he has to go right. I mean, you can you can Mystic Flare to take out the Seder here. Mystic Flare to take out the Seder has to be good, right? But I mean, again, this lane is just such a wash. How do you fight into this? Conflag, Verdant, and a higher unit count on Silent side, and one unit is dying here. Like, I, I don't know. This this is rough. I feel like Claire is kind of overcommitting into a stone wall. Hero's cape. I mean, for nine gold, sure. Hero's cape it is. It's not bad. Intimidation on the Zeus is going to be key. Having initiative right is actually going to be really important. I actually feel like Claire... I mean, shouldn't Claire be passing for initiative already? Claire still wants this left lane I mean it could work out it feels kind of risky I mean Claire's going for it here kind of bricking your own Thunderhide alpha by doing this I mean 
Just passing across for initiative, putting mid down to five, and then intimidating the Zeus and just punching this tower down to six. Feels better. I mean this could this could easily work out. But I mean these three these three heroes are gonna stonewall you really hard. So you've got a you've got a Bella for lethal now. Yeah. Let's hit her mid. So now it's triple hero deploy mid. Okay. Okay. This is this is better then. This actually worked out. And mid is not really gonna be defensible. So this is actually the safer play. This was well played by Claire. So it looks like Claire's deck is gonna be what I'm playing against. Friendly fire is something to watch out for. Mythic Flare, of course, you just play around all six. Thunderhead Alpha, when it gets in a nine mana turn, we literally cannot not have a chump for Thunderhead Alpha. Because you will lose the game if you don't chump block this. Bellow is not a card I'm gonna respect. Uh Relentless Zombie. Sanctum Flag of War. Looks pretty straightforward. Good late game deck. You just wanna strand heroes, go face. Won't be hunted so easily. One Annihilation. Trained heroes go face, play around one Annihilation. But Annihilation, I think, has a hard time making a difference against me. And then Assassinate's going to be big to play around as well. Now it's a Sniper Splash. The Sniper's coming out on the turn, right? Against the Sniper Splash, you kind of want to make sure it's dead on mana 7, right? That's the idea. So you either kill Sniper on 6, or you kill Sniper on 7 with initiative. Now, Sniper's coming out on 4, so if we kill Sniper on 4, he comes out again on 6, and then we kill him again on 6. And we kind of leap, leapfrog, checker jump the Sniper, so that he, he respawns the third time on mana 8, after, an, uh, after um, Assassinate is like not being played on curve anymore. And theoretically, our deck should be aggro enough that we're closing the game out by that point. I feel. Okay, so Silent drew the Annihilation. It's kind of unfortunate. Silent deployed not knowing he would draw the Annihilation basically, right? So, he now has three heroes on this lane. Which he wants to annihilate. Yeah, Silent doesn't even have a tower. This feels... I mean, you have to take left here. This headshot's gonna come up to kill the Seder next turn, though. So this this tower is not even really under threat. Looks like Silence just out of this. This looks really bad for him. Like, even if Silent can defend this for a few turns, looks like he's out. Okay, so we have our opponent then, Claire. I feel pretty comfortable with this. Squishy blue heroes. We've got a good deck for punching things. You, will beg for me to kill you. you can already look at the finals as a guy's deck. Wait, the other bracket is literally done already? The jungle will protect me. <laughs> You're kidding. This is gonna finish up. Dude, the other bracket is literally done already. Holy shit. So, the, I, I, we, we know how that's ending. Sorry for the people who wanted to see Claire win, but that was... That was just closing out, I think. I mean, Silent would be able to stall for like two turns and then it just ends. This is the finalist's deck. This looks pretty good. Mist for the green splash, rebel to open, intimidation. This is a good deck. This deck will literally trash anything on our side of the bracket. So right now, Dodo is literally looking at all three of our decks and just laughing. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is a good deck. That's not fair. I can't beat this. This this deck has like no bad cards in it. On our side of the bracket, we have. There. Let, let's take a look at what we have. We have, okay, let, here's my deck. New Orders. Two Combat Training. Avernus' Blessing. Rebel Instigator. Bunch of jank. And then we've got Bello. Two Relentless Zombie. Which is like, I mean, it, it's not like these cards are bad, but they're not like, 
They're not the signs of like a good draft deck. These are like pickable, but. Oh, thanks for the raid, Anger. <laughs> Basically, we're screwed. Yep. Basically, we are screwed. Dodo is in a pretty good position to win this tournament. Looks like he was steamrolling his games as well. Well, we can make it to the finals. We won't be able to beat Claire. Okay, starting this game in one minute here. This is it. This is the moment we've been waiting for. I actually, now that, now that I've seen Dodo's deck, I actually, when you think about it, it's smarter to literally just lose this game. Because I'm losing to Dodo's deck. So I actually get higher EV. If I get more sleep, just concede this tournament. Because there's no, there's no runner-up prize, right? That's the best thing about this. Just concede the tournament. Get more sleep and do better in the Chinese tournament. That actually, that's higher, higher EV. That just makes sense. What am I doing? <laughs> Why am I playing this? This deck is just gonna win. It'll 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 beat any of our decks. What are we gonna do against this? Look at this. <laughs> it's got a nice curve. <laughs> Good ratioing. It's like, there's not really a single bad card in this. Omex Arena, I personally think is kind of bad. It's sort of situational. I don't like Omex Arena. Yeah, that's rough. How is this how is this not ending it? I mean annihilated mid. There's no way, right? God damn it. Okay, so I mean Silence still needs to actually Your take two towers. An example to all and this Thunderhide is still threatening. It's accomplishing a threat on both lanes. We have like assassinated into Zeus. All Claire needs to do. There's no way. There's actually no way Silent wins this, right? It's like it's kind of it's within the realm of conceivable, but Silent has to triple deploy here and then just hope that Annihilation isn't in the hands and Claire has it. Deployments, holy shit. Scareth, right? Makes sense, I think. So, I mean, this is simple. You annihilate here with Claire, and then you just, like, TP one of your guys and just dump it here to deal seven, right? I mean, it won't always work, but because there's no deployments next turn for Silent, like, that's pretty much what's going to happen. It's going to be an annihilation and then a TP deploy into a naked lane. And that should that should do pretty well here. You're going to need initiative now that Primal Roar has come out. So you're going to have to just pass here for initiative. Thunder Gods on 13 mana. Uh, the Venomancer is too tanky to kill off. But I'm glad you're on my side. You do have to pass, right? You can try to take the TP from here. I mean, this is kind of the lane you want to take the TP from, but if Silent holds initiative, Silent could actually win this game. That's a scary prospect. Uh, the it's a dangerous game. Time Incarnation of Selimene. These are strange times indeed. I mean, the roar will come out. And the Venomancer will die. Isn't that like... I mean, that could actually... 
that could be really, really bad. Like, if Silent has initiative and roars this, that's nasty. Because the Venomancer can die to, like, the control and the sword. Control sword come out, kill the Venomancer. Now suddenly the Annihilation has to be used on the right lane this turn. And then you lose the Thunder Alpha. Which means all Silent needs to do is stabilize left. And then maybe the win happens. So I'm in incarnation here. Oh boy. Unfortunately, there's no multicasting. This is the wrong blue hero. This looks like initiative mid is probably just gonna be held by Claire. Not necessarily held here, but I mean, Silent has a lot more plays, so Claire will probably just have initiative. the far run so this is a big deal silent just passed for initiative this means the roar can come out the venomancer can die to the control on the sword forces the annihilation on the right side which kills the alpha which means if the alpha is gone silent then has one less lose condition there's the roar so now the venom will die to the control on the sword you have to control to kill it so that the Annihilation isn't a threat, right? And then suddenly, Silent just has to defend slash stall left, right? Which, you know, could be possible. Venomancer's not dying here. So Silent's planning on killing the Venomancer on the Thunder God's Wrath. This is probably the better play it's safer. Slay for Thunderhide in this matchup? Mm, slay for Thunderhide is a trap. I want to use my slays on melee creeps. Okay, so time loss. Nice meme. God damn it, guys. Are you serious? How does this keep happening? Well, I guess I'm up against Silent. I think I prefer this. I'm less scared of this deck, honestly. Two blues. Okay. Silent found a win condition. Annihilation here. A lot of early drops that... I mean, the blues won't be able to play early. Looks like there's almost... Kind of a punishable amount of blue cards. Fool Martyr. I assume Silent's going to want to break after that series. Mm -hmm.